Okay, hi everybody. This is A7X Fan Ben, and this is episode 7 of the collection review series. So now I'm going to review all the pirate ships that I have in my collection. So once again, starting with the Five Masters, because I rate them by size, and then by set, and then on down the line. So we'll start with the Five Masters, and the pirates were in almost every set. So we start with the first set, Spanish Main, the Revenant. And right away, we already have a classic gunship. So this is uh, one of the better gunships in the game. It's definitely one of the best pirate five masters. There's not many pirate five masters that have all rank two cannons, unlike uh, some of the English ships and uh, some of the other factions too. And it has a pretty good ability. That ability would be better if it had all L range guns, but it's a it's a decent ability. And I like how the the L range cannons are at the front and the back of the ship. Because it makes it easier to like pursue an enemy vessel, or if, or if you're fleeing, you can keep the 2L gun at the back. And then the Harbinger is probably the Revenant's greatest competition. There's always a fun debate about which ship is better. I've preferred the Revenant in the past, but the Harbinger might be a better ship just because of the ability. Uh, it's a really good ability. One of the only cons of it is that uh, you can take your gunship out of action. So if there's like a big battle going on, you might not want to actually use the ability because then it can warp the Harbinger out of um, out of the battle. But it can be a good thing too because then you could get out of harm's way if, if the Harbinger is getting weak or something like that. And uh, yeah, two points more for a better ability and one more cargo space. But other than that, the speed and the guns are the same. So two of the better gunships in the game and two of the best Pirate 5 Masters. So we move on to Crimson Coast, the Deliverance. This is a really cool ship. Is a ship number 001 in the set, and it has the ghost ship keyword, which was basically the first ship uh, with that ability. So a pretty unique ship. has really good speed. You can see that SL speed. That's really rare for a 5 master. Other than that, uh, the ghost ship keyword is kind of overpriced, so this ship would be better in maybe 16 or 17 points, because ghost ship is pretty tough to use. But due to the speed and the decent cannons, it's still a pretty good option one of the fastest five masters in the game uh, this ship is one of my favorites in the entire game actually this is also from Crimson Coast the ship is really good cannons a huge cargo hold with six spaces which I absolutely love and a pretty cheap point cost compared to what the ship can do so I usually run her out as a as a gunship or like a hybrid so you could put like a captain helmsman and maybe an explorer board and then maybe do some stuff with some fun named crew. The French do have some cool crew you could use on the ship. They have a couple crew uh, with the parley ability. Lenoir is one of them, and then Duncan Rousseau is another. So you could combine uh, French and pirate named crew to make a pretty effective hybrid if you wanted to. The Lady Scorn. This one's not as good. It has the broadside attack keyword. That keyword's not very good on ships with uh, cannons that have any ranked at a four because you have to get a five or six to hit on the broadside attack and also they're all, all l range so you're sacrificing a lot of range if you use the broadside attack keyword because it shortens your range to s but beyond that it's not a terrible ship you got good cargo and enough points to make it a decent ship i would probably recommend adding definitely a helmsman captain and then maybe probably a world hater as well to make the cannons better so not one of the better ships they have but not not the worst five master by any means uh, this is the other Harbinger. This was the one from Davy Jones's Curse. So she got a second version. This one is pretty comparable to the first version. A little bit cheaper, a different ability. This one has the escorting ability, which I don't use a lot, but it's pretty fun. Uh, it's not always practical either. It's kind of risky, but it's a it can be a good tactic. And then the cannons are similarly good, just a little bit worse on the L range cannons. But both versions of the Harbinger are really great gunships. The Prussian Crown. This was one of my first uh, Five Masters because I actually got a bunch of Mysterious Islands packs way back when I uh, rediscovered the game in 2011, 2010. So this one is pretty average overall. The only thing that makes her stand out is the ability. Um, so if you know, if you can see subs in the other fleet or you know they might be using uh, sea monsters or something like that, something that can submerge, it's a decent option. But other than that, nothing too special. The Stoneheart, this one is not very... Uh, popular. Frozen North is kind of a rare set in general and this is also one of the worst Pirate 5 Masters. Once again nothing really stands out. The reroll ability is nice because it helps with all sorts of different stuff but the cannons aren't very good and 
the cargo and speed aren't really anything special either. So, and then here, there's a few missing, but this is the Flying Dutchman from the Pirates of the Caribbean set, but this is uh, the promo version. Basically, it doesn't have any ability. It's really simple ship. It's actually a really great deal for 11 points though, because I would use like maybe a Captain Helmsman, and then for 16 points, you have five cannons moving at LS with three open cargo spaces to raid enemy gold runners or pick up gold from islands. So it's actually a really good ship. I do have the 001 version of the Flying Dutchman. So it has the same stats as this one, except it costs 20 points. And for those extra nine points, you get uh, the ghost ship keyword, eternal, and uh, the crew massacre ability, which is where if you win a boarding party, you can kill all the crew on the enemy ship. So that one's more fun to use, but this one is a bit more versatile and a lot cheaper. And that, because of the cheapness, it makes it a pretty, pretty good gunship, actually. The Foresight, this one I like a lot. I don't think she's too popular, but she's cool. I like the cargo a lot, and she links, you can see a link symbol there. She links to Barstow, which has, he has the Explore ability and the Gold Capture ability, which means if you win a boarding party, you can capture the enemy crew, and then they're worth uh, points. They're worth their weight in gold um, when you unload them at your home island. And then it also, this ship also has the treasure trading ability, which I've hardly ever used. It's, it's extremely difficult to use, especially in like a profitable way. Profitable way. Uh, the but cargo is really good though, so a decent hybrid, kind of an underrated option actually. So getting into the four masters, this is pretty much the best ship of the first two sets. Um, the Dark Hawk, the second, this one is just incredible, and. You can see the cargo space is just out of control. She almost has more cargo spaces than she costs points, which is crazy, especially for a ship this large. And the main reason is because this ability uh, shouldn't drive the cost down as much as it does. Uh, the base move becomes S when she reaches her cargo limit, but you have to fill out eight spaces just to have that ability trigger. So this ship should probably cost 14 or 15, um, or maybe even more, even with the ability, because she also has great cannons and with that much cargo space, you can easily put some good crew aboard and still have plenty of space for gold. So like I said, until the Banshee's Cry came along in Revolution, the third set, the set, the ship was pretty much the best in the game. And you could make a decent case this this is still um, the best ship, or definitely one of the best hybrids and one of the best overall ships in the game. She stands up well over time, no doubt. The Sea Nymph, this one is uh, pretty good. I haven't used this ship a lot, but she makes a decent gunship. The speed is her biggest asset. Other than that, pretty average stats. Has the oarsman ability built in. The Raven's Neck. This one I love, actually. I love ships. You'll notice I love ships with uh, big cargo holds, regardless of how fast they are. Because you can make them into hybrids, because they have enough space to put good crew aboard. And then you'll still have space uh, left over for gold. So this is a good example of that. And this one is a cool hybrid, because she has good cargo which lets you put crew and gold aboard. And then she's kind of like a perfect hybrid because the the ability kind of helps her find good uh, coins, but then she also has good cannons, so she can be a gunship as well. And then the Shadow is another pirate four master from the same set, with all, also with six cargo hold. This one is a little bit more gold oriented because the cannons are considerably worse, but you do get the home island rating ability. So you put a Helmsman and Explorer aboard, you could have four spaces left over, so you could either get gold from islands and or uh, raid enemy home islands. So it's a pretty cool option. Uh, the, this one is really interesting. Not many four masters have less than three cargo spaces. So this one has almost no cargo for a ship of her size, but the speed and the ability are both quite good. So this ship is usually used, and I've used her in the past, as kind of like a suicidal, like ramming attack ship. So if you use like a, a helmsman and a captain, or even just a helmsman sometimes. You can move and then maybe shoot and then get pinned on purpose and then just try to do as much damage as possible. So most of this kind of like suicidal type ships in this game um, are the smaller ones. Like there's a handful of two masters and one masters with a similar ability, but this one is like unique because it's bigger and because most of the early sets had larger larger cargo holds than the later sets, so to see a four master with only two cargo spaces in the very first set is pretty strange. And you can see the other pirate four masters, most of them have very large cargo holds. So the revenge, this one 
is just really average. I've never liked this ship at all. And she gets plus one hundred cannon rolls against my favorite faction, which doesn't really help. Just super average pretty much in every way. The cannons are actually a little below average. Um, nothing to write home about. She got a promo version, but it's the same exact ship, so there's nothing exciting there either. The Ranger, so now we're into Crimson Coast. This one is just wasting points on broadsides attacks. I don't that keyword's really not that great. It's usually overrated um, for the most part. The speed is okay. It's not a bad gunship, but there's nothing really exciting. The Eagle, this is another uh, great example, kind of like the Dark Hawk the second. Another great example of why negative abilities are actually really positive things for a ship to have. Because usually they're worth having because the negative isn't really that big a deal. But driving the ship's cost down is really important because then you can fit more crew or more ships into your build. So without this ability, this ship would probably cost 11 or 12 points, but now she gets into single digit territory, which is kind of ridiculous for how good the ship is because you can see her cannons and cargo are both very good, and the speed is easily augmented with a helmsman. So with a captain and helmsman, the ship can have LS speed for 14 points and then still have three spaces left over. So I mean, the Spanish are a pretty popular faction, but it's definitely worth having the negative ability because it lets you put more crew in your fleet. The Feathered Hat. This one's not too popular. South China Seas is a really rare set. The rarest set, basically, and the most expensive one. It's a pretty cool ship, though. It has a nice, accurate cannon at the bow, and then it also has really good speed, like a few of the other ships we've seen recently. Uh, the crew of an, the ability doesn't really help at all because the pirates have the best crew in the game, so I don't really need that ability at all, but it's a, it's a nice ship, a nice option to have. Pretty cheap for what you get in terms of speed and firepower. This one is... Uh, pretty awesome too. I think this one's a little more unique. You get good speed again, but now you have a big cargo hole. And then, like I said, the reroll ability is really versatile. So the Black Heart uh, is a really, really cool ship. Really versatile. I've used her kind of as a hybrid before. Uh, it really, this ship really depends entirely on the crew setup. So you could crew as a gunship or a gold runner or a hybrid. I would probably use her as a hybrid, like try to run gold and fight, but. It's a really cool ship. Just don't get it confused with Blackheart the crew, because there's a space here between the two words. So, but you could use you could use uh, Captain Blackheart on this ship um, if you really wanted to. The Black Diamond and the Broken Key. I'm grouping these together because these are two of my oldest ships back from 2006. Davy Jones Curse. I got two special edition boxes, and these were the two ships. Uh, these were the two SE ships in those boxes. So these have a special place in my collection because they were my original pirate flagships back when I only had my original collection of 49 ships. I didn't have any pirate five masters in my uh, original collection back then. So these ones were the pirate uh, flagships. Neither of them are that great in the game. I just have I just like them a lot, and they both look really cool, especially the broken key. They're pretty uh, nice looking ships too, and they have cool like sail designs and deck designs and stuff like that. The Black Diamond, pretty much average in every way. She does have a nice ability. It's kind of hard to use it without uh, a, using a decent amount of crew with it, so it would be nice if she had a little more cargo with it. And then the Broken Key, like I said, Broadside's Attack is an ability I like paying for, but it's not a terrible gunship. And then Dragon's Breath. This one I think is underrated because the ability essentially makes all of her cannons rank 3L. So it's actually a pretty decent gunship for the point cost. The 30 Tyrants, this one is pretty old in my collection as well. Once again, brought to attack, not worth paying for. And then the rest of the ship is pretty mad. Not really anything exciting going on. The Xiaoman's Claws, this one, similar to the Dragon's Breath, I think this is one of the more underrated gunships pretty much in the whole game. I never really hear anybody talk about her, but her guns are pretty good. Nice rank twos at the bow and stern. A decent uh, boarding ability. And then solid speed, so a pretty solid uh, option for a gunship. The Diamond Strike, this one is amazing. I actually think this ship is underrated. I mean, a lot of people know how good it is, I guess, but I think it's just, you can't say enough about this ship. It basically gets two of the best abilities in the game on one, on the same ship. So you'll notice most ship abilities, most ships only have one ability, but the Diamond Strike has the World Hater ability, the first one, and also the sack ability, the sacrificial ability to eliminate crew to get extra actions. So two of the best abilities on the in the game on the same ship. So basically all the cannons are 
rank 2s and then the x the sack ability is just essential or not essential but it's amazingly good for any gunship so you could really crew this ship with like a captain helmsman and then a bunch of oarsmen and just absolutely wreck opponents with it the jaguar spirit this one i don't i don't really think about much um she does have nice l range cannons and solid speed the cargo and the ability are pretty lacking but a decent gunship the obago i like this one actually uh, don't get this confused with the Obago Deuce, which is uh, the rarest ship in the game. Only around 30 copies are supposed to exist. This is the really uh, cheap and easy to find uh, promo version, the first one, just the regular Obago. It's actually pretty good though, and I would, it's pretty much better than the other one, <laughs> weirdly enough. Um, but yeah, this one, similar to the Jaguar Spirit, nice 3L guns. Uh, the ability is okay, the pirates don't really need it, but not really a bad ship at all. And then the Pioneer, I don't like this one. Uh, just super average and boring in my opinion. And then a similar ability, but now only English crew are allowed, which they really don't need English crew. Um, there's only a few unique options they can get from them. So yeah, the Pioneer, not one of my favorite ships. Some missing here, those are in my uh, other box, Traveling Collection. Flor de la Mort, this one is fun. This is really unique, I think uh, this is the only ship, I believe, with the gold capture ability uh, built into the ship. Other than that, it's kind of a below average ship, but with the right crew aboard, and the pirates have a lot of great named crew, with the right crew aboard, you can make this ship pretty dangerous, actually. And the gold capture ability is usually fun to use, especially if your opponent brings uh, a lot of named crew to the table. The Wicked Wench, this one is actually really cool. You can see the home island raiding ability, but then it says as much treasure as she can carry. So this ship isn't limited to taking one coin per turn from enemy home islands. So I would recommend maybe Hammersmith. He gives the captain and helmsman abilities into one crew. So then you would have those two abilities and then still three spaces left over for just 20 points. So pretty good deal. The Lady Scorn. A lot of people like this one for good reason too. It is pretty good. It has two really good abilities. Eternal and then the reroll ability which is versatile like I said. And you can use it with like extra action crew, SAT, same action twice crew. And other other than that, pretty good stats. Solid cargo, good cannons in general. Not great, but decent. And then solid speed. And then it has a nice link to Calco Cat, who has, who has that same uh, SAT ability built in. Which was later changed to the Born Leader keyword. I'm not really sure why, but they wanted to make it into a keyword in the last set. Uh, Lucky 7. This one's a Home Island Radiator, a regular one, not like the Wicked Wench, so she can only take one per turn. Other than that, pretty average. The Bruja, this one is pretty strange. Uh, like that ship earlier, we saw only two cargo, but this one is really offensive. You can see the Fear keyword, which is usually only in the Cursed Faction. And then, uh, for every hit this ship scores, you eliminate a cargo from the other ship. So that's one of the most brutal offensive abilities in the game. And uh, she has decent cannons to use that ability with. Not much cargo space, but that pretty much limits her to a, strictly a gunship, but she can do it pretty well. The Neptune Swords. This is one of the better four masters in the entire game. Uh, great ability, great speed, great cargo, solid cannons. So the ship can be a hybrid or a gold runner generally. So yeah, I would generally recommend using this ship as a hybrid since she can play that role so well. Pretty much one of the best four masters in the whole game. The Golden Medusa, on the other hand, is definitely a gunship. You can see the good cannons, a really good ability to protect the crew, and then similarly good speed. So I would recommend crewing this ship uh, with a lot of good named crew and generic crew and definitely use her as a gunship. The Bloody Spear, this one's average. This is pretty much what I call a perfectly average ship. Um, for a four master, four cargo is about uh, pretty much the standard. L speed is average. The guns are average, a mix of L and S, but all rank 3. Rank 3 is pretty much an average cannon. And then plus one of boarding rolls is a really popular ability that ships have and crew have. So nothing, absolutely nothing special. And those are uh, my least favorite ships are the boring ones. The Sunrise Fire. This one is boring except for her ability. Uh, the S Explorer ability, so if you're within S of an island, you can mark it Explored. Um, and then it take, takes away the Explore markers from other players. 
This one's usually not worth spending points on, the ability, but in a bigger game, or a game that you expect to go a long time, the ability could see some decent usage. And then next we get to the Gruesome, which I like a lot, actually. I think this ship is kind of underrated. She's not great, but she combines a nice ability with decent cannons and then some solid speed. And the point cost is pretty cheap for what you get, so it's tough to know how to use her. Um, a Captain Helmsman is probably the best option. And then you have one space left over, which you could try to use the ability with. The Schooner key keyword could help in that case, because you could stern turn with the Schooner keyword at the end of the move action to touch an enemy ship without ramming if you wanted to. So that's one idea of how to use the ship. This is the other Neptune's Horde. This is a great example of the reverse power creep. So we saw the first Neptune's Horde here, which is one of the best hybrids in the game. And then we have the Ocean's Edge version, which totally nicks this ship. It's terrible, super slow. This is one of the most annoying and worst abilities in the game. So basically, if you have a Helmsman, you move SS with no potential for more from the ability. But then if you don't have a Helmsman, you're moving only S 50% of the time, which is totally unacceptable uh, for almost all games that you'll be playing in. So, and then you throw in the high point cost. I mean, this ship should probably cost like 11 points or 10 even. Um, just absolutely wrecked the ship. <laughs> um, so the Rum Runner, oh, I love, I actually like this one a lot. This is a weird ship. I don't think many people use her. And she's definitely pretty strange. Uh, it's tough to know what to do with her. I kind of consider her like a kind of an expensive gold runner that's not really that great but has a little bit of hybrid potential but I mean the cannons aren't accurate but they are long range which is nice and the cargo and speed are mostly average but the parley keyword is what makes the ship stand out to me because that ability is pretty rare and it didn't really show up on much stuff it didn't even show up until the 10th set the Pirates of the Caribbean set so to have it built into a pirate ship is pretty cool so I've used it, I've actually comboed this ship with a home island raider, so then you can raid an enemy home island, and then when they try to take the gold back, you can just use parley to keep it. Um, oh, which of course, in that case, you would want uh, to st steal a better coin than you had on your home island or elsewhere. But And then the delight, this one is interesting because the ability, which hasn't, this is also a kind of a rare ability, and then it has a random L range cannon in there towards the stern, but other than that, mostly an average gunship. The Akualapu. This one is amazing. Uh, this has a one of a kind ability. And what I mean by that is that second ability after the galley keyword, this is the only place it appeared in the entire game. So it's a really unique ship, and it's really great. It's pretty much the perfect ability for a hybrid, because once crew don't take up space, you can basically add whatever you want and then you still have the four spaces left over for gold. So it's a perfect hybrid and then it's even more perfect because the cannons and speed are pretty good for a gold ship or a gold runner. So, and it's pretty much appropriately costed. It's not like it's too expensive or too cheap, at least not in my opinion. So yeah, I would put like Captain Humpson Explorer would be like a basic setup or you could go a little bit more interesting and add some named crew and make her pretty dangerous. This is another fun ship to use with Home Island Raiding, actually. And the pirates actually have a named crew you'll see in episode 8 of this series called Grim the Savage. He was a former Viking um, who turned pirate in the Fire and Steel set. And uh, he can take as much gold from an enemy Home Island as he wants. Just like, the, just like we saw on the Wicked Wench up here, that same ability. But he has it on a crew, and he's the only crew with that ability in the game. So Captain Helmsman, that guy aboard... You could have a pretty good uh, raider there with four spaces open to take as much gold from home island as you want. And then the Crusher, this one is pretty unique. The Curse got almost all the Scorpions in the game. The Crusher is the one the Pirates got. It's a super rare. You can see the uh, sparkly black rarity. Um, they started adding glitter to the super rares in the last few sets, or basically just Ocean's Edge and Rise of the Fiends. But, uh, kind of strange but the scorpion is maybe my least favorite ship type of the actual like sailing ships probably um partly because it's really strange it came from an idea there's a drawing by leonardo da vinci actually uh that had like a weird like outline for it so it is actually 
oddly enough, it's actually based on like a historical concept, but not something um, that I know of that was actually used ever. The ship itself is actually pretty good for as Scorpion ships go. Most of them are pretty bad. This one's actually pretty fairly priced. Um, and still not too exciting, but kind of a unique ship though, definitely. Okay, so we're into three masters now. The Batavian Bat and the Muerta de la Corona. So I'm gonna group these two together, uh, together here. These were my first two pirate ships and two out of my, two out of my first four ships. So if you saw the Spanish uh, collection review, Spanish ships collection review video, I probably said that the Asesino de la Nave and La Repulsa were my first two Spanish ships. And then those two ships and these two ships were my first two packs. And my first pirates purchase was just two packs back in the day. Um, it was like early 2005, as far as I know, like after Spanish Main came out, and I believe before uh, Crimson Coast came out, I think. So these are my first two uh, pirate ships. Uh, neither of them are that great, uh, similar to the Black Diamond and the Broken Key that we saw earlier. This one has a nice ability, but she can't really do that much with it because she's not very good at gold running or fighting. The Muerta is better. She has good speed. She's a she's actually a pretty decent uh, support gunship. If you know that you'll be facing the Spanish, you could definitely recommend her. If she is extra good against those, uh, against the Spaniards. The Greyhound, this is another old ship of mine. Um, this ability is kind of tough to use unless the ship has good speed. This one only has L speed. So you're kind of either stuck with uh, running gold kind of slowly, or you could uh, waste points on the ability and just get a captain helm someone which is probably a better option, but not really a great ship The El Dorado this one is kind of weird the cannons are kind of strange with that 2L randomly in the middle Not very much cargo, but as the same ability as the original Harbinger, which is a really nice ability to have But other than that, it's kind of a subpar ship. The ability does make up for it The Longshanks this one is one of the better three masters in the game and this was a ship that was dominant back when the no duplicates uh, rule didn't exist. So people would just, in the 30 point format, you could conceivably run five of these in one game, which would often dominate uh, in different games back when there were only one or two sets released. The ability is part of the reason the cost is so low, but it's not really that big of a detriment to the ship. Because other than that, it's almost perfect. It has good speed, good cargo and solid cannon, so there's nothing really to complain about. And it has the perfect amount of points, uh, point cost to have like a captain, helmsman, a billard, and then maybe room for like an oarsman or an explorer as well. The Silver Dagger, this one has an interesting ability. So when the ship is healthy and has all her masts up, she does have good speed, especially with a captain and helmsman reward to move SLS, but as soon, as soon as she starts taking damage, she's gonna slow down a lot. So it's kind of a gamble. You want to make sure you get the first shot if you're using this ability on a ship. And uh, kind of a tough ship to use, but kind of an interesting route to go if you wanted to. Okay, so now we're into these two, which just happen to be, which just happen to be two of my favorite uh, ships in the entire game, regardless of faction. So the Greed's Hammer has an amazing ability. I've already talked about that in the other videos in this series. The plus two gold ability is amazing. You basically cannot overstate how good it is because it wins games by itself uh, especially if you get the bonus multiple times because gold wins the game and the more gold you have the better so if you can really stack up the bonuses it's just a game winning it's just ridiculously good and it's a, it's also underpriced so this ship should I, if this ship costed 14 or 15 points i would still use it not as much but it wouldn't even really be that bad of a deal because you get pretty much perfect cannons and good cargo as well the speed is kind of is average, but with a hammersmith aboard and maybe an explorer or something like that, this ship can really do well as a hybrid. This is one of one of the coolest hybrids in the game. I just absolutely love the ship. I can never say anything bad about her. She's just amazing. Similarly, the Selkie I think is really just a, such a cool ship. So for a very fair point cost, you get nice L range guns, but then with the ability, you can double them with the sniping ability. So you, only, you can only roll a 6 to hit, um, but it can be combined with the World Hater ability if you wanted to, to hit on a 5 or 6. And then, other than that, the cargo is pretty good. I mean, 
the overall package you get as a gunship for nine points is quite good. I'd recommend like a Captain Helmsman at least, and if not more, and you could add more crew if you wanted to. Uh, and I would maybe a cannoneer would actually work pretty well. I haven't thought of that before. I just thought of that just now, but a cannoneer on a uh, sniping ship would be a good idea because then you could try to re-roll to get a six. And then the Panama Sun. So now that we're past those two, two of my favorite ships, now these are going to probably pale in comparison. And yeah, this one does pretty much average outside of the ability. This is a nice ability to have though, because ramming is a pretty viable tactic. I've looked into house rules about like eliminating ram damage, and it's definitely something I'm interested in. Um, so it's a nice ability either way though. And then the Devil's Kiss. This one is thoroughly unspectacular. Probably the the reason I remember this ship is actually because there's a there's like a typo, there's like a misprint on most of the ships. I don't think all copies had it, but I think most did. It has like a 4S cannon and a 3 out cannon on like the the jib boom, like the foremast. So it's kind of a, it's an interesting misprint. But other than that, the ship's not really that unique. And you can tell here that it looks like it was meant to be uh, like a three masted square rigged instead of like the jib ship design that it does have. HMS Ricketts. This one is weird because it has uh, HMS in the name, like because it, it was a captured English ship. But it's not bad. The ability basically makes all their cannons rank two. Um, but other than that, not too special, but a pretty solid support gunship because of the firepower. The Princess. So you'll notice how similar this one is to the Longshanks. Um, this is another example of the reverse power creep, but also a more appropriate cost. Because realistically, realistically, the Longshanks probably should have costed like at least eight points, if not more. And then this ship has um, a little bit worse cannon, then it has a little bit slower speed, but other than that, it's the same ship, which is a little bit, it's more fair. Uh, the point cost is more accurate based on what else exists. The Ranger, this one is okay. She's kind of hard to find like a roll for because she has a, a gold ability and not very good cannons, but then she has good speed and average cargo, so it's kind of tough to know what to do with this ship. Um, it's not a bad ship at all though. The Centurion is a pretty good uh, gunship actually. She has a nice combat ability and then pretty good cannons along with solid amount of cargo and point cost to put some good crew aboard. Okay, so now we're into the FNS historical pack, which was basically uh, like a promo, like a uh, limited edition pack from Fire and Steel, where they basically released four ships along with uh, named crew to match that were based on history, which is really cool. I think they should have done that more. Um, but either way, we finally got to see some ships like these. The Royal Rover, this one is pretty good. Um, the ability is nice, it's kind of hard to use unless you have a lot of cargo, like I said earlier, with the Black Diamond, but it's a decent ship overall. The Queen Anne's Revenge, Blackbeard's ship, that's in my traveling collection right now. It's a pretty good ship overall. Uh, none of these four are super amazing, but they're all like pretty fair for their point cost. They're pretty good ships overall. The Amity, like I said, this ability is kind of a little bit annoying to have because you'd like to put some cargo aboard, so like some crew. And then as soon as you load up on gold, you're going to be slowed down to just L, which is pretty slow for a, a, any kind of gold ship. And then the Minerva, this one is pretty good. You could make a decent case. This is maybe the best of the four, or at least uh, in the top two. She has a nice ability and decent guns to use it with. And also importantly, she's also pretty cheap for what you get in terms of firepower. All right, so we're into the next binder. I used to have just that one big binder for all my ships, but then as my collection has expanded, I've expanded to two smaller binders as well. So now I have like three binders for ships, and then one for crew, and one for UTs and forts and like other miscellaneous stuff. So here we are back with three masters. Um, so now we're into the three masted square rigged ships. So we're back to Spanish main here. The Ledron. This one is actually really cool because you get pretty good firepower for a cheap point cost and then it has an interesting ability that's tough to use. I haven't really seen this work in most games but if you can get it to work uh, it could it could be pretty cool. Um, the Recreant is definitely better. It has uh, one more cargo space. Everything else is the same except for the ability which is better because you can eliminate a crew once per turn on a hit. 
So the Recreant is one of the better three-masted gunships the Pirates have. Quite good. The Windjammer actually wrote a uh, miniature review of this ship on Miniature Trading. It's quite good. The speed and the cannons are pretty good, and then it has a nice ability that forts can't shoot at the ship. This was a really uh, unique thing that WizKids did because forts weren't actually in the game in Spanish Main, the first set. They weren't introduced until Crimson Coast, the second set. So this is a really unique thing where there's an ability that kind of like previewed a future set. But either way, the Windjammer is one of my favorite uh, gunships that the pirates have. The Pandora, this ship is kind of like, in my opinion, kind of like a poor man's Darkhawk II, uh, which is that ship we saw earlier, uh, 10 points and 8 cargo spaces. This one costs more and has one less cargo space and one less mast. But it's pretty, it still has good cannons. And then the reason it costs more is because it has a positive ability instead of a negative ability. So that's the reason for the difference. But it's a similarly good ship that can be used as a gold runner, a gunship, or in my opinion, she's best as a hybrid. And because of the Darkhawk the second being so good and definitely superior to the Pandora, this one really misses out because she's overshadowed by the Darkhawk. But the Pandora is actually pretty underrated. The Freedom, this one has the Home Island rating ability. Pretty good ship overall. A little pricey for what you get, but pretty good cannons and a nice ability to have. The Silverback, this one is not quite as good for the most part. It does have a nice defensive ability, but there's a lot of S range. There's more S range cannons in the game than L range. Even this page is a good example. Um, and then it has a kind of an ugly cannon in the middle. It's L range, but it's rank 4, so kind of a weird cannon assortment as well. I, don't, I haven't really used this ship much um, at all, but she's not too bad. It's a gunship. The Morte de Yarborough, this one is pretty solid. She has a nice ability, that pinning ability we saw in the Ballista. Uh, decent cannons and pretty solid stats overall. The Santiago, this one suffers from uh, one of my least favorite things, which is an ability that doesn't fit well with the ship's stats. So you can eliminate cargo with every hit, which is a really great offensive ability. But then the cannons are pretty bad. They're not very accurate. So you need like a world hater to make the ability uh, as effective as it should be, which is kind of unfortunate. So the ship is usually a waste of points for the most part. The Amity, on the other hand, is cool because everything fits together well. So you have the speed and the cargo to have a good gold runner. And then the ghost ship ability helps her as a gold runner because... When the ship is ghostly, she can't be boarded, and you can also move through islands and terrain, which is really cool. And then the cannons are terrible, but nobody cares because it's a gold runner anyway, so everything fits together really well. And then, so next page, the Accused. This is actually a really cool gunship. Um, I would say this one is definitely underrated as well. It's a really great ability to protect your crew. And then the cannons are great as well, so this is definitely a good three-masted gunship. The Madagascar, this one has uh, this one is a tough one to use because their cannons aren't that good, but the speed and the ability are kind of interesting. I would maybe use this um, as a gold runner or a hybrid because uh, you could, if you get shot at, you might have enough firepower to shoot and then move away with the reverse captain ability, which this ship has. And then you have the speed to hopefully uh, evade ships as they come after you. And then the Black Cat. This one also has the reverse captain ability, but this one, the cannons are kind of average, and it, it's kind of, it's kind of just an, it's kind of an interesting ship. The stats are kind of average, but the cargo, the ability, and the cannons make it a little bit more unique than some of the other boring ships out there. It really depends. Uh, both of these ships would really, their usage would really depend on what crew you put on them. The Nancy Knox, on the other hand, is just plain bad. Uh, the speed is really uh, limiting, so if the ship wins a boarding party, she can save as much treasure, but the problem with the speed is that you can't really catch enemy ships and win boarding parties, especially against enemy gold runners, but because they're probably going to be moving much faster than the Nox in this case. And uh, she could do okay as a hybrid, but for 17 points, there's a lot better things to, to spend your, uh, your points or your gold on. And then the Poison Dagger. So this ship I don't like at all. This is a great example, kind of like the Bloody Spear, and a similar name actually, Bloody Spear, Poison Dagger. 
uh, super, this is literally the epitome of the average ship in this game. So 10 points is about average for a 3 master. 3 cargo, pretty standard for a 3 master. L speed is average. 3S cannons are average and mediocre. And the ability, it, like I said, is quite common and really not anything special. So I don't like ships like that at all. Super boring and uninteresting. The Black Mongoose, this one's a little more cool. Uh, between the speed and the cannons are L range. This is actually, and it, it's a cool looking ship too. You can kind of tell from the deck a little bit. This is what the Black Mongoose Tavern at Miniature Trading is named after. Because the flavor text on the ship talks about like a Black Mongoose Tavern, uh, tavern I mean. And that's what the little sub forum at Miniature Trading is named after actually. Uh, the Revenge, this one, it should say three masts. Um, this one's a little contradictory because it has a cargo based ability. Um, but you're not really going to be running gold with it very much with those cannons. But similar to the Accused and some of the ships we saw earlier, a pretty good three masted ship. Uh, the Fortune, this one is also a three master. Uh, it has a decent ability that we saw earlier as well. Pretty solid uh, three masted mid sized gunship. The Satisfaction. And then, yeah, this one's similar to the Santiago. It has the cargo wrecking ability, but then it doesn't really have the guns to take advantage of that ability. The Rising Sun. Uh, this ship has um, arguably, uh, I don't even know what to call it really, kind of overpowered, or very overpowered, but it's like, I don't know, it, arguably the most game-breaking ability that was on a ship or a crew. Um, I'll talk about I'll talk about it more in the Pirates crew review video, but if you don't know about it, uh, it basically is uh, just ridiculous. So it's basically a game-winning ability that totally will wreck everything if used properly. It's just it's way too good. Uh, other than that, this ship is pretty good overall, mostly average, but uh, pretty interesting, and that ability is pretty rare too. The Siren Song, this one has the whole minor rating ability, nice cannons. I like this ship, it's pretty fun to use. This is another Lady Scorn, there's actually uh, three different versions of this ship. This one is pretty much the worst of the three, it has broadside attack, but then it has a rank 4 cannon which totally wastes the ability, and then the rest of the ship is uh, kind of below average. And then the Black Mamba. This one has a weird ability that I don't like at all. If you roll well, it's good, but I roll a lot of ones during shoot actions, so I don't like using this ability. And other than that, the ship is pretty average. Okay, so now we're getting into um, the three-masted schooners, which I think are really interesting. As a ship type, three-masted schooners are, especially from the early sets, are pretty fast and usually have pretty good stats and abilities. And the pirates and the Americans in my opinion, got like the best of them for the most part. Not that the other factions didn't get any good three-masted schooners, but the Pirates and the Americans really uh, did well with this ship type. So, you can see the four from Crimson Coast that the Pirates got. The Treasure, this first one here, has good cannons, solid speed, and then a nice ability that forts can't hit the ship. This is perfect if you want to go up against a good fort that you need to take out as the cannon accuracy to uh, to do the damage. The Adventure, this one is really great. Uh, good cannons, or at least decent. Really big cargo hold, and a solid ability to complement um, her hybrid status. Because I would probably use this ship with the Captain Helmsman for 14 points. Kind of like the Eagle that we saw, a four-masted ship. It's LS speed, three card spaces open, solid cannons, and a solid ability to help her steal gold from enemy ships, maybe. Or just be a good hybrid in general. And then the Gilded Monkey. This one's not quite as good. But it does have the home island rating ability again. And the cannons are okay. Not really too great. Um, kind of an interesting ship though. Kind of a unique one. The Duke is pretty pretty powerful. Um, all range cannons can't hit the ship. And then it has very good speed as well. You have 15 points available for crew. So you could put some pretty damaging name crew on there. The guns are okay too. The treasure and the event, the adventure is definitely the best of the four. The other three all hold up pretty well as well. The pride, this one has the broadside attack keyword, 
which like I said isn't that great, but this one's still pretty worth using. I wouldn't actually use the broadside attack here, I would just use those nice L-range cannons as is, and that has good speed to be a pretty solid uh, mid-sized gunship. The Cursed Blade, this is one of my original ships um, from back in 2005 when Revolution first came out. Um, I, this was the subject of my first miniature review at Miniature Trading, and it's still one of my favorite ships in the game. And the reason why is because I find her really interesting. She's not boring. Uh, she has a lot of cargo space, solid speed, solid cannons, and then she has a nice ability to take gold. And like I said earlier, uh, with the Gruesome, you could use the Schooner ability to stern turn to use that ability at the end of a move action without ramming if you wanted to, and then that could prevent you from getting pinned, which is nice. And there's just so many different options for crew and what to do with the ship. Like, you, you could use her... Probably as a hybrid is probably the best way to use her, but you could use her as a gunship or like a gold, like treasure raider. Like you could steal gold from different enemy ships as well. The Mocha, this one's not quite as interesting. Pretty average in most categories. She has a little extra bonus at the end there, plus two if her opponent is a sea monster, but you don't really want to go around boarding sea monsters because you'll just end up getting pinned. And sea monsters don't really have anything to lose in boarding parties most of the time because they can't carry crew and if they have gold that's extremely unlikely and uh, other than that the ship is pretty average. The Lady Newport, this one I kind of like actually. She kind of pigeonholes herself into a gunship role because the cargo is so small but the guns and the speed make her actually a pretty solid option. The ability is not likely to come into play at all but with a Captain Helmsman she can be a solid uh, very quick um, mid-sized gunship. The Belladonna, similar to the Wicked Wench, uh, the four master we saw earlier, this one has the ability to take as much gold from an enemy homeland as she wants when she raids instead of just one per turn. And this one uh, also costs 14 points and also has enough car or 15 points and also has enough cargo to put uh, maybe one or two crew aboard and then still have some space left to raid enemy home islands and also good cannons. So this one Probably the biggest uh, issue with this ship is it's a little slow for uh, to raid enemy home islands with. It would be perfect if it was like 13 or 14 points or maybe it had SS speed or something. But not a bad little ship, or mid-sized ship I should say. Uh, I actually think this ship is underrated too. The Belladonna is pretty cool. And it looks kind of intimidating. It has like black and red sails. Uh, the Claret, this one is nothing too exciting. The cargo and ability is pretty low. But the ability broadsides attack makes the point cost go kind of high for what you get. So there's a lot, there's many better options for a three massive gunship. The Typhoon, this one, this is a Jade Rebellion captured ship that the pirates got. Uh, nothing too special. The real roll ability is nice, and that makes the ship more versatile. She could be kind of a hybrid actually. I haven't really used her a lot, but. And then the Empress. This one is pretty solid. The speed is low, but the ability and the cannons and the cargo all kind of make up for it a bit. Not completely. I mean, speed ships are pretty bad for the most part. But this one's kind of like a slow, lumbering gunship. So if you have a captain and helmsman aboard, you can move SS. And then with the captain ability, you'd have basically 1S guns, which is pretty powerful. So slow, but uh, pretty uh, damaging. The Fuchuan. This one... Uh, this is a tough ability to use with only three cargo spaces. Um, other than that, pretty average, kind of expensive, because that ability costs like five points, or maybe three or four in this case, but still. Uh, the Seraph, this one is pretty cool. I like the, the cannons are solid, the cargo and speed are solid, not a bad option. Most galleys aren't very offensively minded, so this is one of the better uh, galleys to use as a gunship in the game. Same with this one, actually. The Kerbak has some nice cannons. The cost is quite low because uh, if you roll a 1 on cannon roll, you have to roll in a mass, which is pretty annoying. But it does make the ship pretty affordable to use as like a support gunship. And then the Pearl. I actually love this ship. It's kind of a weird opinion to have. Um, really slow and kind of expensive for what you get, but you do get a lot. You get solid cannons, you get a lot of cargo space, and you get a really nice ability 
that can really help you in your gold game. It can help you see what treasures your opponent might take before they take them, things like that. So the Pearl is a fun little fun little hybrid. Put a Captain Helm some aboard and see if she can help out your fleet. I love trying to fit ships like that into my fleet builds. I just find it fun. I like I like ships with big cargo holds, even if they're small, because I think they're fun to use because there's so many options. Like I said, there's so many options for crew, and then you can make them into hybrids if you want, things like that. The Splinter is another good example of that. This one, though, is more of a gunship. She only costs seven points, so you, you can't fit too many crew aboard without running up against the point limit of the ship. But this one does have really good cannons. Um, you don't want to roll a one. So in this case, you'll probably either you're going to eliminate your own mass or you're going to hit most of the time. Um, this is kind of all or nothing. But similar to the Pearl, though, this is a solid little option as a hybrid. Maybe use, like, Captain Helmsman. Uh, and maybe an explorer as well, and then you still have two card space left over for gold. 13 points is not a bad deal. The Coleoptera, this one is the only pirate submarine. Uh, it's not too special. Uh, plus one against mercenaries doesn't really matter much because they're not, they're the worst faction in the game. They don't have that many ships. But the fact the pirates got a sub at all is definitely something um, that's great for them. One little sneaky tactic you could try is putting like a home island raider crew on the Coleoptera and then stay submerged and keep the crew face down until you get right next to an enemy home island and then you can surface the submarine and reveal the home island crew uh home island raiding crew at the same time in the same turn to surprise an unsuspecting opponent the Bonnie Kate okay so now we're into the Spanish main two masters most of which are pretty average and generic nothing really too exciting this one has good speed Royal Fortune, similar but Spanish crew now are allowed instead of English. This one's not as good because the cannon, uh, w a worse cannon rank and then worse speed. The Treachery, this one is pretty solid little deal for what you get. Decent little support gunship. The Chico, similarly pretty solid for what you get. Good speed. The Carrion Crow, this one is a little more unique. Because it has really good cannons, but similar to the Splinter, uh, you might lose them if you roll badly. And then the Carrion Crow is a dirt cheap support gunship set a captain, only 7 points. The only problem there is the speed is still kind of slow, and she doesn't have enough points to add a captain and a helmsman, because that would be 5 points. But put a captain aboard, and she could be a nice little support gunship. The Venture is similar. I don't like this one as much, though, because... Um, in my opinion, the ability... See, so yeah, I don't like this one as much. The cannons are worse, and the ability is pretty annoying. As soon as you get dismasted, you have to sink, which is pretty frustrating. And then, the Bonnie Liz. This is one of the best gold runners in the game. And, uh, basically, I would usually put, like, a Helmsman aboard, and then maybe an Explorer as well. You don't really need the ability, but it can be useful in a few specific fleet builds. The Charles, this one isn't one of my favorites. It's kind of tough to know what to do with her. Um, in this case, I would probably, I would put a captain aboard to take advantage of the ability, and then maybe a helmsman as well. So then you could have a hybrid moving SSS with average cannons and two cargo spaces open. The only problem is that that would cost you 14 points, and there's definitely better ways to spend your points, especially in the pirate faction, but it's still a decent option if you wanted to use the Charles. The Hades Flame has the Ghost Ship keyword, really good speed, kind of similar to the Amity, which we saw earlier, but this one, um, slightly better cannons, same cargo space. It, the Amity is a little bit better deal for your points, but the Hades Flame is a really cool ship to use. It's just really thematic, it has the Ghost Ship keyword really fast, and then it's like, it's like white and red, so it looks really cool. So in terms of like name and thematic... Uh, nature of the ship. The Hades Flame is like pretty much one of the coolest ships in the game, even if it's not quite one of the best. Okay, so we left off with the Executioner. This one is actually a really good support gunship. It's kind of like the quintessential support gunship as the best guns in the game, and then it has a really good ability too. It actually has the cargo space to be like a potential hybrid though, so this is a really good ship from Revolution. And then the Bloody Jewel. This one is kind of infamous for being uh, kind of an under-costed gold runner. It's one of the better ships out there. Uh, it has a negative ability, which brings the cost down. It's pretty similar to the Bonnie Liz. And then the difference, once again, is like a positive ability, 
versus a negative ability on the Bloody Jewel. So this is one of the better gold runners in the game. Just use like a Helmsman and or an Explorer and you'll have a really great gold runner. And then the Yarbrough's Revenge. This one's not too popular or famous, but I kind of like it. Um, as decent, just decent stats over, overall, and then a decent ability that can help the ship out a bit as a hybrid potentially. The Orca is not very good at all. With one cargo space, it's tough to uh, have good crew for a gunship, and then the guns are terrible anyway. But then it's hardly any cargo space to get gold with. So the ability is nice, but and she's fast enough to use it, but you can only pick up one coin when you go to an island, so it's pretty a pretty lacking ship. And then the Jamaica. This one is pretty good. I would. It's not too bad anyway. It's not that great compared to other uh, ships the pirates have. But I would put a helmsman aboard and then have LS speed and three cargo spaces left over. Not really a lot of cargo space to add an explorer as well, but a nice treasure trading ability that can help trade away negative UTs if you find them. The Tejon is actually really cool. This is one of those ships with L range cannons that you can double the range on. If uh, and if you get a six, you can hit with the sniping ability. So it's kind of like a smaller version of the Selkie, which is that three master we saw earlier that I like a lot. This one is pretty effective as a support gunship as well. So you can hit really accurately at long range, or you could hit um, on a six at uh, extra long range. And the Shamrock is similar to the Jamaica, same point cost, basically almost the exact same ship, uh, just trades a cargo space for speed. So the Shamrock is probably a little bit better because of that speed but they're pretty similar overall same ability and everything the full moon this one's not very good uh pretty expensive for what you get she could be a support gunship but there's better ways to spend 14 points like the selkie for example is a good one or the raven or a ship like that with some crew aboard because the ability in this case is kind of a waste of points and it's the ship is kind of pricey for what package you get then the just wind is a little bit better uh, you can, yeah, these ships are really similar too. You can see the Just Wind has the exact same ability. Everything else is the same, but she has an extra cargo space. Um, so the Just Wind is a little better, but still not a great support gunship. The Cat's Claw is decent. So with a Captain crew, uh, she can have really good cannon. So the Captain Helmsman, you could have a pretty effective little gunship. But once again, it's a little bit pricey for what you get. The Fancy, this one has an interesting ability, but it's not very helpful when the cargo space is pretty low so if you use her as a gold runner she's not going to be very fast but then she's not very good as a gunship either so kind of a tough ship to use the dolphin this one's a bit better has a nice uh, crew killing ability and then it also has uh, some long range cannons and decent overall stats decent speed and cargo for the point cost the paradox this one is really unique i love this ship you always know that a uh, ship is going to be good when it has more cargo spaces than it costs for its point cost. So this one has five cargo spaces, but it's only four points. So it has the same negative ability as the Banshee's Cry, which drives the cost down. This one is really slow, but if you put a Helmsman and maybe an Explorer board as well, you'll have a decent little gold runner, actually. It'll be slow, but you'll still have a good amount of cargo space to pay up coins. So with a ship like this, usually I would go to the islands close to your home island because she won't really get to the others anyway, at least not before other ships get to them. So this is a ship you could try to make multiple trips to nearby islands with to get gold. And then moving on, we have the Coco here. This one is pretty cool. I think this ship is kind of underrated. She's kind of like an interesting like hybrid raider. So I could, you would probably put maybe Hammersmith aboard, which combines the Captain and Helmsman abilities into one cargo space. And then you could have LS speed, and then you could raid enemy gold runners and take all their gold in one. You don't even have to win the boarding party, you just have to touch the other ship in some way. And then you still have three spaces left over. So kind of an interesting hybrid. The Royal James, so now we're into two-masted schooners, which were introduced in uh, Crimson Coast, the second set. The Royal James is a really great support gunship, kind of similar to the Executioner we saw earlier. And then we're gonna see the Panda in a second, which is also similar to those two. Uh, this one has really good speed, good cannons, and a nice crew killing ability to match. So very good support gunship. The Raven, this is one of my oldest ships and also one of my favorites. Has great speed, great cannons, good cargo, and a nice ability to not be pinned. So this is a really cool ship. She's usually best used as a gold runner, but she can be a support gunship and kind of a hybrid as well. 
because she has the stats to back it up and play pretty much any role you want for her. The Cutlass, very similar to the Royal James, basically the, the exact same ship but with a little bit worse ability, plus one against kin rolls against forts with an S, which is a pretty specific ability. The crew killing ability is going to be more useful, but the Cutlass is still a good support gunship as well. The Panda is pretty similar to the Royal James. She's a little slower, one more cargo space, the guns are L range instead of S, but the reason the point cost is higher is mostly because the ability, instead of one crew per eliminated per turn, this one eliminates a cargo with any hit. So if you get two hits, you can eliminate two crew instead of one, or if the other ship has gold, you can actually em eliminate coins, any type of cargo. That's a really powerful offensive ability. So those are the four uh, two nested schooners the pirates got in the uh, sets two and three, Crimson Coast and Revolution. You can see they're all really good. And now as we'll see some of the other ones that aren't quite as good as the reverse power creep happened as the sets went on. So the Black Arrow, this ship has a really obnoxious but good defensive ability. Other than that, she's not too special, but the ability makes her pretty good, but also kind of pricey for a two master. The Zanzibar, this one is strictly average. Nothing really stands out. Pretty much average in all categories. The Sea Crane, so this is a two-masted junk. This one is quite good. This is just a remake of a Jade Rebellion ship of the same name with the same stats and ability. That's a really great ability though. It's not quite as good as the plus two gold ability that we saw in the Greed's Hammer, but it's still a great ability to have. And since they're different numbers and different, technically different abilities, you can stack them on the same ship. Like Genny Gallows gives plus two as a crew, so you could put her on the Sea Crane to get plus three, which is really powerful. The High Pang. Okay, so this is basically the fastest ship in the game. Not in terms of base move, you can see LS, like even the Raven has a faster base move than the High Pang, along with like the Banshee's Cry. But the High Pang has an ability to get plus L with a captain. So with a captain and helmsman, her her speed becomes LS LS. So the High Pang is the fastest ship in the game. And it's kind of expensive, but it's completely worth it, especially if you use her with uh, Captain Jack Sparrow, who I'll talk about in the Pirate Crew video. But overall, the High Pang is so good. The fastest ship in the game, pretty much. And arguably game-breaking with the right crew aboard. The Kintai Fong, this one is pretty average. The guns and ability make her a little bit interesting, but other than that, nothing really stands out. Uh, there's Yan here. This one I did a review on. She's pretty, she's not too exciting, but the speed and the guns make her a decent option for a support gunship. The ones we saw on the previous page are gonna be a little better because they have some nice combat abilities, but this one's not too bad either for the same point cost as some of those other ones. The Swift is actually pretty good. She has the Explorer action built in. So she's not very fast, but if you give her an Explorer, she can be a decent uh, gold ship. I think the guns are pretty serviceable, so this is actually kind of a cool little ship that doesn't really get much attention. The Otter, similarly, is actually pretty good, kind of underrated. She can be a decent uh, hybrid, actually. She has a nice defensibility, solid cannons, and enough cargo space and speed to do a few different roles if you wanted her to. The Dragon is actually quite good. She has a negative ability, which drives the cost down once again. So similar to the, uh, some of the other uh, Pirate Gold Runners we've seen, really effective for the point cost. Five cargo spaces for just six points with good speed and even good cannons too. The Freedom's Hand, this one is pretty cool. She has this another ship with a sniping ability. This one doesn't have long range cannons so you can't get that really long range but you can get S plus S range with the sniping and then the speed makes her quite viable as a support gun ship. So this is a pretty cool ship. This is one of the cooler ships that came out in uh, the last few sets which weren't really as good quality as the first handful of sets. The Tiger, this one is pretty weird. The ability says the cannons can't be eliminated, um, but the cannons aren't very good, and she only has two of them in the first place. The ability makes her pretty expensive for what you get, and other than that, the ship isn't uh, very useful for much. The Sister's Rage, uh, similar to the Black Arrow, this one has the can be shot out with an S ability, which is really annoying, but it's also effective. It's a very effective ability. This one is pretty good as a hybrid because she has the speed, cannons, and cargo to potentially run gold and fight, and the ability will help her in both of those roles. The Devil's Pay. 
This one is pretty cool because she's only four points. Uh, the 2L guns are really nice. The biggest problem with this ship is that she's kind of slow, so you can't put a Captain Helmsman aboard because that would be five points. So you have to settle for just a Captain uh, for seven points total, but then you're only moving L, which isn't really fast enough to catch much as a gunship. So, And then, moving on, we have the Plague of the North. So this one gets plus one against Vikings, which isn't very useful because they're not a popular faction. And they only appeared in this one set, Frozen North. Other than that, pretty average ship. Uh, the Triton's Bane. This one is okay. Nothing really stands out about this one either. Pretty average for the most part. That ability is better on smaller ships, so it's nice to see it on like one and two masters because they're pretty vulnerable to ramming compared to larger ships. The Pillage, this one I don't really like. The ability doesn't fit, kind of like the Fancy. The ability doesn't really fit with the cargo and the speed. And other than that, it's an average ship. Okay, so now we're into the One Masters. So the Zephyr and the Snipe were the two One Masters from Spanish Main. The Zephyr, for the first when the first set was the only set released, the Zephyr was the fastest ship in the game with an LL base move, uh, which was later surpassed by the SSS base move. And nowadays the Zephyr doesn't really have a lot of good roles for her. One good thing you could do is maybe hook up a flotilla, which we'll see uh, in a minute or two, and see, because uh, you can tell flotillas at that LL speed based on the flotilla rules. The snipe is actually a pretty good ship for flotilla too. Just have to watch out for getting rammed, because the snipe has a nice defensive ability. The biggest problem with these two ships is they they don't have much cargo, so it's tough to tough to do much with them really. The rover. Okay, so now we're into some of the more on, uh, overpowered ships. So the rover is only two points for two cargo spaces and really good speed and a good little cannon too. So you can't really put crew aboard for the most part. At least no, there's not much point in doing so. But you could run out at SL and then get a coin then come back at the same speed. Or you could get two coins and come back at just S which is really slow. But the ship is good as like maybe like a almost like a tugboat type roll. Or like a towing ship. If you have a ship that's derelict and it needs to be towed home, the rover could do it. She could actually have a helmsman aboard too and not run into her negative ability or the point cost problem. Um, and also has a good cannon, which is nice. And you could try to tow a flotilla with the rover too. The Coral. This one is a pretty solid little gold runner. She's overshadowed by the other two One Masters from Revolution, which we'll see in a second. But she has a nice ability to not be shot at while docked. And then... Just overall, her stats are great, so very good speed, the best cannon you can have, and pretty good cargo. Banshee's Cry, so you probably have already known about this ship. This is pretty much the best ship in the game. Only three points, you get four cargo spaces and LL speed, which is um, pretty overpowered and arguably game-breaking in some people's opinion. Uh, the negative ability brings the cost way down, but even with that negative ability, this ship should have costed probably 7 or 8 points just because it's so good, or at least 6 at a bare minimum. Uh, so yeah, I would usually use a ship, you can use her without crew and she's still a really great ship. A Helmsman makes her speed blazing fast at LLS, or you could do an Explorer, or you could do both, and then you'd have two cargo spaces open, um, and for 6 points total it's still a great deal. The Lightning, I think, is a pretty good ship. Uh, she's kind of lacks a good roll. I would usually send the ship out empty so she could pick up as many coins as possible. She'll be a little slow, but you could still add a Helmsman too if you wanted to. Uh, the Bandito, this one is decent. I like this ship. She can. This is a good example of like a simple ship because with the ability, you don't really want to add crew because she's not going to be much of a gunship anyway and she doesn't have much cargo. So she basically, because of the ability, she runs out at SSS, picks up two coins, and then sails back home at S plus S, which is not a bad deal for six points, realistically. The Queen of Cups, this one is kind of a... This one is tough because she is perfectly built to be a gunship, but then she only has one cannon in the first place. So she has a nice cannon, a nice ability to use it with, but you're not going to really do a lot of damage with just one cannon, so it's kind of unfortunate. The Jolly Mon... This one is famous. This is supposed to be the little sloop that uh, Jack Sparrow, Captain Jack Sparrow had at the beginning of the first parts of the Caribbean movie. That's what it represents in the game. Uh, this is the only one point ship in the game. There's a, a few different two point ships. I think four total. We already saw the rover up there. 
And then um, the Jolly Mon is often a spot for uh, the Hag of Tortuga or Cannonball Gallows, which are the Pirates' uh, zero limit ransom plus five points to your build total crew. Other than that, she doesn't have a lot of uses. She could tow a Flotilla, but she's so fragile, and if you put anything on board, she's going to slow down. So not a lot of uses, but I mean, for one point, it's almost free. So it's kind of a weird addition to the game. The Weasel, this one is terrible. Uh, she costs way too much for what she can do. Extremely slow. The Home Island Reading ability is a good ability, but the Weasel doesn't have the speed or the durability to withstand um, any attacks on her or escape any enemies that will come after her. When, when you raid enemy Home Islands, you'll probably annoy your opponent. So they're probably going to come after you, and the Weasel just can't handle... Um, any kind of attacks, so she's really not a good ship at all. The Beast Belly is pretty decent, I think, actually. I would put a Helmsman aboard and probably nothing else. This is kind of one of those suicidal attack ships. So if the ship is pinned, you eliminate a crew and a mast from the ram ship. And then if you win the ramming roll, uh, you can eliminate two masts and one crew total, which is pretty damaging for not even having a captain aboard. And then in this case, the turtle ship keyword might help the ship uh, ram again potentially later in the game or soon afterwards uh, The Inferno this one's not really any good uh, The ability doesn't really help her. She's probably not gonna have a captain aboard because there's better ships to have that crew on um, Just S speed is really limiting like I said not a ship that's really good at anything. She looks kind of cool She does have like like a flame design on her sail The doom box okay, so now we're out of the ships and into the some of the random stuff at the end here so the pirates have two flotillas, the Doombox and the Widowmaker. These were uh, like floating gun platforms that came out in the last few sets. The Doombox is a super rare. We saw the Crusher earlier, which was this other super rare ship from the SR pack for Rise of the Fiends, ROTF. Uh, this one is pretty solid. It's pretty average as flotillas go. There's better flotillas out there. Um, the Spanish and the English definitely got the best flotillas. Uh, they both got two really good ones. The Pirates got pretty average ones. But Flotillas are still really good because you get four cannons for a pretty low point cost between like six and ten points. And which is great because most four-masted gunships cost more. I mean, you do have to tow them, but they don't slow the ship down like towing a derelict does. So they're perfect for faster ships, such as like the Banshee's Cry or even the Coral, or some of the ships I mentioned earlier, or the Raven is a good example as well. And then they give you like a mobile gun platform, and they get you uh, the extended range keyword, which is really nice. So that's a really good way to bypass uh, tough enemy abilities like cancelers and things like that, because you can shoot at uh, certain ships from outside the normal range. So that's the Doom Box, pretty good. And then the Widowmaker isn't quite as good. Uh, you get all the cannons are one rank worse for just one less point. So realistically, flotillas are sometimes the costs are a little off. So the Doombox is a bit better, but it is a super rare. And the Widowmaker is their other flotilla. So they're both, I still think they're both worth the points. They're, they're, they're both good. And then now we get into the sea monsters. The Seleucus, this one is really, really good. You can notice the ability is quite powerful. Um, I haven't used it in a long time. I think my copy of the sea monster is missing three out of the five tentacles so I should try to get a new one but uh it's a really amazing ability that can become extremely powerful because um, you can move enemy sea monsters too which can be pretty crazy and then here we have the pirate giant crab uh Rhinoidia, however you pronounce it this one's purple the crabs are Kind of pretty good actually for sea creatures because the Titan keyword allows you to put crew aboard, which is really unique. No other sea creatures uh, have that uh, capability. So I would always put a captain on this one to take advantage of the devastating offensive ability. That's a pretty rare ability. HMS Endeavor is the best ship that has it. Um, but this one is one of the better crabs. They're, well, there's only three. They all have their uses. You could make a pretty good case that this one is the best because of the ability and the speed makes it quite powerful. So this is one of the better abilities uh, offensively in the game and a good example of a ship that's, or a, like a, you know, a ship essentially that's really fragile but can also do a lot of damage in a short period of time because they can't repair. 
Um, and in that case, they're almost similar to long ships in terms of the damage output. And then we have more Gower here, which isn't very good at all. Uh, sea Monster, the ability is just, just wasting points, and it's not very unique at all. And then last but not least, we have Ophidius, which is Eternal and a nice, interesting ability. This is one of the best Sea Monsters in the game because of her cannons and also the speed. So yeah, this is one of the most unique Sea Monsters in the game. Has a weird negative ability that keeps the cost down, but it's a really great Sea Monster overall. And that concludes... Collection Review Series Episode Number 7. So next I'll be covering Pirate Crew. And thanks for watching.